What's happening everybody? The Poets here. Hope you're doing well and staying safe. And as you see here, there's stuff. This is the RG Strix 3090. This is one of the most coveted cards that you can get in the GPU world. And you couldn't find it anywhere at the height of the human malware thing that was going on. So this is a video that I've been waiting to do for a long time because I wanted to wait until people could actually start to get GPUs. The only reason why I was able to get this particular card was because Micro Center in Tustin actually knew, Tustin, California, knew that I was looking specifically for a Strix 3090 because I had a Strix Vega 64 in my primary build, Deep Blue, and it felt right to just replace it with a Strix card, specifically the 3090. And so when I got to Micro Center, they had it there waiting for me. I did a whole video thing on it on TikTok. Um, so thank you, Micro Center, for that. And now that people can actually walk into a Micro Center, buy a GPU, um, granted, prices are so high, but it's so much better than it was just a month ago, let alone six months ago. Um, you can actually get GPUs that you want when you walk into a store. That's, that's beautiful. Now, when it comes to the next stage, custom water clone. That's, that's kind of my bread and butter. That's what I love to do. And so EK actually has some options for the Strix 3090 as well as many other GPUs. Uh, this right here is the front water cooling plate for the Strix 3090. And then this right here is the, the normal back plate that you would have. So you have some options. You can use the normal back plate or you can step it up a notch and use the active back plate that's right there. Now I did a previous video showing the temperature drops on the active back plate on another 3090 because they have back plates that fit multiple cards. Um, and the temperatures dropped on the, uh, the back memory of the 3090s by 48 degrees Celsius in Blender. Amazing, right? Um, so I expect nothing less uh, when it comes to this for the Strix 3090 as well. So if you wanna see like numbers in terms of how effective it is to have an active backplate on there, check my previous video, I'll link it in the description. Uh, but for this one, I'm just gonna focus just on the numbers of the, the memory on the back side of this because that's the big thing for 3090s. When you're say gaming, how hot is that memory getting? because um, you need a lot of airflow on that when you're, geez, uh, video editing, running Blender, or using your card to make money, you know, as many people have been doing the last couple of years, uh, that back memory gets very, very hot. So that active backplate does a wonderful job. So I'm going to show you in this video how I'm going to take this GPU apart, put on the front plate, as well as the normal backplate, show you the temperatures for that, and then drain my system, blah, blah, blah. I'm not going to show you all that draining part, see my previous videos on that. And then I'm going to apply the active backplate and show you the differences. All right. So there will be positive gains uh, for having the active backplate spoilers, right? Uh, but some people just want to see that type of data. So it's just going to be for the back memory temps, temps for this video. Okay. Uh, let me know in the comments what questions you may have and definitely go to EKWB's website for their configure thing that they have going on where you can actually say, this is my GPU, which front plates do you have, which active back plates do you have that are compatible with my GPU. And then they have instructions to walk you through everything as well. So I'm talking way too much. Let's get started. Access granted.
All right, welcome to the workbench. So all of my testing has been done on Deep Blue here. This is my primary build. It's a Threadripper 3970X system. So that's 32 cores, 64 threads. It does have 128 gigabytes of RAM courtesy of Kingston Fury actually. Uh, the Strix 3090 is impressive. I'll just put it that way. Uh, this is also the Gigabyte TRX40 uh, Oris Master motherboard for Threadrippers and uh, the Fantex 719 case. Uh, pretty much all the cooling in here is done by EKWB, so we have the pump rise combo. Uh, we have a 480 millimeter rad in the front, another 480 on the side, the back side here, and then a 360 up top as well. So plenty of surface area for copper radiators as well. And be quiet, silent wings, three fans. They're some of my favorite fans for radiators actually. So when it comes to the results, because that's what a lot of you have watched all this for. <laughs> uh, so the Strix 3090, I put through the ringer over a long period of time. So on air, it performed very, very well, but the downside of these 3090s is the VRAM on the back. So that gets very hot depending on the use. Some games may press it, obviously. Uh, video editing can definitely press it. Blender can definitely press it. People use their GPUs to make money these days. That can definitely press the VRAM. So basically I try to do my, my testing in terms of real world usage. So who would use a Threadripper system and the type of applications they would actually use it you know, on a daily basis. So this is for that individual and for those that just are curious, obviously. So on regular air, so the stock cooler for the Strix 3090, the VRAM did hit 96 degrees Celsius as a maximum. And that was in a couple of different applications. Obviously those mid to high 90s, not ideal at all. Um, if it got much hotter, you know, you start to get some instability, some thermal throttling. Uh, but this Strix 3090 did very well of not showing me any instability, uh, but I would have to actually go into the data and see, oh, okay, I'm not getting all that speed that I thought I would get. So remember this, 96 degrees Celsius for the VRAM on air, right? Stock air. Then I put the EKWB uh, Quantum Vector uh, backplate. So just the, the nickel plated backplate on there. And it actually did lower the temperatures to 86 degrees Celsius. So that was the max temperature. So a 10 degrees Celsius drop with the just traditional backplate by EKWB. And of course it would have the, the front water cooling on that. So that's really what's dropping the temperatures down in, in a big, big fashion. So a 10 degree drop, not too shabby, just putting it on a traditional, you know, water cooling block. I, good job. But now, the big thing, the active backplate. When you add this to it, the maximum temperature, and I've been stressing the heck out of this card, was 66 degrees Celsius. Actually, it's right, right here. There you go, 66 degrees Celsius. You can't see it, maybe I'll zoom in or crop it or something. But yeah, so, and this is after many, many, many hours of testing in many different applications, Blender, Dimension Resolve, um, just all kinds of stress testing. So when it comes to an active backplate, dropping it from a 96 degrees Celsius on air to 66 degrees, I mean, it's kind of random that it's exactly 30 degrees Celsius, but um, in my previous testing, actually, for this 3090 right here, it actually dropped the VRAM temperatures by 48 degrees Celsius. So it's really going to be dependent on the GPU in terms of how much of a benefit that active cooling is going to be. Uh, for that one, that's an HP Omen one. Uh, it came out of an HP Omen 30L and it, it's, it performs spectacularly, I will say that. Uh, same thing with the Strix 3090, spectacular performance, uh, especially when you're putting both of these on water. So recap, 96 degrees Celsius on the VRAM for air. 86 degrees Celsius for just your traditional backplate while it's on water, and then 66 degrees Celsius with the active backplate. So that's all the data. Let me know in the comments if you have any questions whatsoever. Follow me on TikTok and Instagram and Twitters and all the Facebooks and all that good stuff. And uh, I will see you guys later. I'm going to bed. It's been a long couple of days doing this. <laughs> Peace.